Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today is a harvest day. I'm going to show you everything that I'm pulling out of my gardens and I'll go over some basic harvesting tips. Generally speaking for this video, and I'm going to do a regular homestead harvest series, is I harvest before I put my sprays down. Even if they're organic and it's the peppermint spray and it's not going to do anything to you, I like to go through the garden, take everything out for the week that I'm going to use, and then I put my sprays down. These are two squash and zucchini plants. As I, you know, pull out the squash zucchini or I'm harvesting, I also take the time to look under the leaves, inspect the leaves, and really look for squash bugs, squash bug eggs, other problems like that. So we can see one large zucchini ready to pull. Now you can harvest zucchini smaller, even a little bit smaller than that one, and that's perfect cut up in salads. They're really tender. As they get bigger, maybe to this size, they're great for grilling. And if you even let the zucchinis get even larger, they're perfect for making like zucchini parmesan. And the skin on here is pretty soft, so when you cook it, it's um, you know easy to digest. Now if you go over to the crookneck squash, that's a harder skin to digest. So you really want to pick them when they're tiny, maybe this size, because I can push into that. The skin isn't too tough. As they get bigger, sometimes you have to peel them, but I can see at least five in there. So let me show you how I harvest the zucchini and squash. So I use a basic knife to harvest. Also, if you see leaves that are damaged or in the way of the camera, you can just cut them. I usually just cut the tip of the leaf off and I leave the stalk in there. It's all right to remove some of the leaves. If you see any leaves that have diseases on there, you want to get rid of them. Some people cut the stem all the way down. I just cut the top off. When you're going to harvest a zucchini, if they're smaller, you can just twist them and they'll just break right off. Sometimes they get larger and you don't want to be tugging on it, so just take a knife and gently cut into it. Just twist it and it's going to pop right off. And that's the safest way to really harvest your squash and zucchini so that you don't cause any problems. And I like looking in there, making sure there are more flowers coming, the plant looks healthy. If this was, and look at all the leaves in here. Let's see if that's in camera. Yeah, you have all the leaves that are coming up. Nice healthy plant. I don't see any marks of, or I don't see any droppings from worms. I don't see any marks in the stems from um, vine borers. So that plant looks pretty healthy. All right, let's go over to the squash. So here's a leaf that's beat up. Just cut it out, remove it. This is probably gonna just break off. And this is the perfect size Nice and tender skin-wise, solid, and this is perfect for salads. There's a larger one over here. And this variety tends to just be breaking off. This is still soft. You just don't want them to get much bigger than this. When you let them get larger, the seeds get larger too. So you want to be eating these when the seeds are not fully mature. Already to three. There's one down here. And if you tug on it, see that one didn't snap, it's also larger. Just get in there with your knife and just put a tiny cut right there and it'll come right off. Four, grab this one, that should pop off. Five, and six. So this plant's fully harvested and it's ready for the antifungal sprays I'm putting down. And again, I'm looking for nice green leaves in the middle. Any leaves that are problematic, I'll remove. I sell these harvest bags at my seed shop. They're made from natural fibers. So as we go through the harvest, we're gonna stop at all different plants. I will put them all out under my gazebo just to show you everything that we harvest today. But if you're interested in these harvest bags, you can find them at my seed shop, and they hold, you know, quite a bit. All right, let's go find uh, some cucumbers. So this is two plants, actually, and it's a bush variety. Um, it looks pretty big to me. Uh, but the cucumbers are ready to harvest, and they're pickling types. So I basically get them at about this size, and I just go in, like that one's, you could pick that if you want. It's perfect for, you know, pickling. But I like them about this size for cucumber salad and you can see that I'm twisting it off you can do that but it can take a while 
but you don't want to be tugging and damaging the plant. Here's the other way to take them off. Let's see. Well, we got two in there. Three. I mean, a lot are coming in. Four. Let's five, find one that's a good size. There's one down there. And as I'm looking through here, I'm also looking for cucumber beetles. Those are usually yellow with stripes or dots. The other way to do it is take your thumb, hold the cucumber, and just push it forward. And you won't damage the plant that way. Let's take a quick look and see if there's any more in here. Very good size. A little bit smaller. But we'll take that and we'll just push off the stem. All right, that's one group of cucumbers. Here, another group of cucumbers growing up a trellis to make a tunnel. Now, there are a lot of male flowers on here. I can see females, but sometimes your cucumber plants are just going to be out of sync and you'll have more female or more male flowers. That's perfectly fine. You can see a couple tiny ones on here. There's one back there, not quite ready yet. These are full size cucumbers. They're going to get eight inches, 10 inches long, some more over here. Now see that is a pollination issue. We're gonna pop that off and we're gonna eat that one. Here's a good size. That's what you usually see in a grocery store. I think these are market mowers. And you just push off the stem. A lot easier to push off the stem than it is to twist. Another one here. I'm gonna take that one. That's kind of small, but perfect for salads. So there's a lot to harvest today. We have blackberries, green beans, uh, kale. And when you're taking a look at your cucumber plant, you know, if you see something that doesn't look right, you can just take the outer leaf and pinch it off. And that's how I clean off my leaves nowadays. It's a lot easier than trying to reach in there and get to the stem and cut off the whole leaf. But this plant looks pretty healthy, nice and green. I've been spraying the undersides with peppermint oil. That video is on my YouTube channel if you want to check it out. And it does a great job of really keeping, I think, spider mites off your plants. So a nice little haul for cucumbers. That'll be made into a salad today. And we have more squash and zucchini. Then we're going to hit the green beans. I have my squash spread out across the garden. This way, if you have diseases that come or problems that occur, you don't have all the like plants in the same space and then it gives a chance that maybe one survives if you're having a bad problem with other ones. This is a different kind of squash and it should snap off too. Just twist it. Perfect size, nice and tender. That Maybe I'll slice that up and put it in there with my cucumber salad. And again, if you need a harvest bag, please check out my seed shop. I really appreciate the help. So here's another one of my zucchini plants, and this one's more vining. You can see that how it's growing outward, and I've been harvesting from it really for the last couple of weeks. Leaves I removed by cutting off the tops, and I just let them die off. And again, I was saying search and look around, because right in there is a cluster of squash bug eggs. I'll remove those. I'll also spray the undersides of these leaves with some neem oil um, once I'm done harvesting. This is a great size for harvesting. It's I'll pull that back. It's nice and shiny, tender, and you just twist it up. This one's getting a little big, but it's still tender, and this is just your basic green zucchini, and it breaks off really, really easily. I have five squash and zucchini plants tucked in in different areas. Actually, six. I forgot to have a, sca a scallop squash. This is a crookneck still developing. I'm going to leave that one because I have plenty. And I actually accidentally, and look at all the little ones coming up there. I actually left two plants in here by accident. I usually start two in a cup, dropped it in here, and I forgot about them. So this is kind of tightly packed together for your um, squash or zucchini plants. You only really just want one in a space. But I'll take care of this as long as I can. And you can see the regular sprayings and waterings and feedings have really kept this plant healthy. And the whole goal is to manage down disease and problems, get a lot of production. When these get beat up, I'm gonna put in new plants. Let's make our way through the sunflowers. All the sunflowers here, I did not plant. They came from plants from last year. They overwintered, were scattered around by birds, and they are the healthiest looking sunflowers I've ever grown or didn't grow. I mean, look just how thick and strong these stalks are. I'm gonna plant sunflowers that way going forward is 
I'm going to put them in in the fall, late fall, when it's cold, and I'm going to let them overwinter and come up. These are my green beans. These are on 8 foot, 10 foot PVC posts. I'm making a teepee, and we're going to be harvesting the green beans out of there. And let me just show you the best way to remove them. And these are perfect green beans. Nice and round. The seeds inside aren't too big and they're not bulging out. That's when you want to harvest them. Grab the green bean with three fingers, grab the stem, push, and you have the green bean. And I'm going to go through, harvest all of those. Looks like we're going to have a lot of vegetables. So I'll make a pile of green beans. So I got a nice little pile of green beans. This is a great way to grow them, by the way. These are pole beans. We're going to go harvest um, some of the bush beans. They just don't get as tall. This is the perfect size for harvesting your green beans. They're super tender. They snap really easily. They're going to be delicious tonight. And these are bush beans. I actually bought them at a uh, nursery. It just said beans. I assume they were pole beans. And you can see that this pole is just a waste. So bush beans get anywhere from, I don't know, one and a half to three feet tall and they're a little bit stockier and they look exactly the same. You harvest them the same way and you can get your bush beans. Um, you can harvest your bush beans the same exact way and sometimes people use these in containers if they don't have a lot of space um, but I prefer the pole beans. Let me take these out. So this is my kale. It's red Russian kale and I'm going to take a lot of these leaves today before I put the neem oil down and I just reach in right to the stem and push down and you can take off a perfect leaf. And maybe I'll harvest, I don't know, about 50 leaves. If you're going to cook them down and saute them down, a lot of leaves really cooks down to something small. Um, so probably harvest more than you think. I like to cook them with potatoes and onions, uh, saute them down, they're delicious. I also like to make salads out of these. I think today I'm going to harvest more for salads. So that's a nice haul for the kale. There's one more squash plant I forgot about. This is the scallop squash, and this is just one plant. It takes over a space. I love it, and then I plant it, and then it takes over my whole garden. So right in here, you can see, well, that's pretty cool. That's one that's just starting. But there's a nice white scallop squash, and they will get huge and it should just break off. But this is the perfect size for sauteing. But they will um, get triple that size. You can let them grow as long as you want, but remember again, when you let squash grow, the seeds get larger and they're a little bit harder to digest. And here's some more beans. They are climbing type, and I think they're, these are pinto beans actually. And I'm growing these not to eat as green beans, but I'm letting them mature on the pods and I'm gonna harvest the seeds. I'm not going to dry the seeds. I'll use them in soups. So you can use bean. You can grow beans um, for different purposes. The pole beans, the green beans, are perfect for picking and cooking. Pinto beans are perfect for letting the seeds dry and saving the seeds. A lot of you've been asking how is my corn doing. This is uh, actually 60, but it was eight by eight, 64 corn seeds planted in a four foot by four foot space, and it's chest high now. But they're really healthy doing well. The trick with corn is you just want to keep watering it really regularly. Um, they need a lot of water. But so far, so good. So beets are super hardy. They sometimes look like they're growing slowly, but when they take off, they take off. So in here I have the round red beets. I have cylindrical beets. You can eat the greens. That's a cylindrical beet. I'm just going to pick a couple of these and roast, these will be for roasting on the grill. Let's see, here's another cylindrical type. These are carrots right in here. This carrot is probably getting close. I like to pick my carrots when they're smaller. Let's go over to the other beet area. So you have your basic red beets, you know, round, cylindrical. You also can grow beets that are orange, and this is a nice, whoop, round, orange beet. We'll take that one. We'll let those grow. They can stay in the ground pretty long. They don't get woody or anything like that. So they look pretty good and I'm going to keep just letting them grow and harvest as I need them. Let's go over to my other garden for a couple more beets. This is my other garden. 
that I'm doing a container series in and for a small gardening. And these are just your basic round red beets. And these are, I like them to get a little bit bigger, but that's a great size. There's my thumb for size. So that's plenty of beets for my wife and I. Those will get grilled. So tomatoes and peppers will be ready in about a week. There are some peppers that are ready to harvest, but I'm not going to take those yet. Blackberries, thousands of them. So obviously these aren't going to go into the harvest bag because they'll get smashed. So let me pick a big bowl of these. I'm going to learn how to make blackberry jam, and I'm also going to be putting these on a vanilla ice cream. So again, probably a thousand blackberries. Blackberries should pull off real easily. They'll be plump, really soft to the touch, and they just fall off. That's when they're the sweetest. Sometimes if you pick them too early, like if you have to tug kind of hard, sometimes they're a little bit tart. But when they get large and just pop off, that's usually when they're the sweetest. All right, got a whole bowl to go. So I did pick a lot. I'll show you in a second. But there are still hundreds of blackberries on here. So I'm going to have to call some friends to get them out here. I mean, just look at all these. They're, um, you know, you think you'd be ready for the next couple of days. I just picked a whole bowl. So here's today's harvest. If you like this video, please let me know. I'll make more of them. But I intend to do a harvest, homestead harvest series. So we've got a bowl of blackberries for snacking right now for dessert tonight. Green beans are going to be cooked up for tonight. Cucumbers are going to be used for lunch. Kale is going to make that salad for the lunch. Plenty of squash, zucchini, beets for the grill. For the grill, these vegetables I'll use over the next three or four days. And again, I like to harvest and then I put my sprays down. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And if you're interested, please pick up some of the harvest bags. Thanks for watching.